Okay, so we're live. Give people a second to kind of trickle in here. All right. So hi, everybody. Welcome to Sunday Story Time. I'm Megan. I'm one of the kids book specialists here at Powerhouse. If you ordered books through us uh, over the phone or through email in the last couple of months, or if you stopped by our store in Park Slope, you probably talked to me. That's where you can find me hanging out usually. Um, this is a very special story time for us because it is a POW story time. So for those of you who don't know, in addition to having bookstores, Powerhouse also has a publishing company. And there's an imprint of that called POW Kids Books where we publish these really awesome picture books. And these past couple of weeks, we've gotten to do story times with authors and illustrators from POW. So it's extra special for us because they're kind of like our book babies too. So thank you so, so much to John and Yulia for joining us this morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and in the chat post the link where you can buy copies of The Climbing Tree um, from Powerhouse Bookstores that help support not only us, but this really awesome author and illustrator that we have here today. So if you want to show us some love, show them some love, it's a really good way to do that. And while I'm talking about the chat, some quick housekeeping things, how you can interact with us during this event. So the first one that I just mentioned, there's a button on your screen that says chat and it's got one little text bubble on it. If you click on that, it'll open a window um, where I'll be putting things like the link to buy the book. It's also where you can leave fun comments if you wanna tell us that you think the book is awesome, if you want to say that John's shirt's really cool, or you really like Julia's glasses, all cool. You can do that in the chat. The other button that we'll be using a little bit later is the Q&A button, which looks really similar to that chat button, except it's got two little bubbles. If you click on that, that's a really good place to go ahead and put some questions that you have. Um, those will be answered a little bit later, but go ahead and put them in there as you think of them and we'll get to them later, just so you don't forget. So, with all the housekeeping stuff kind of out of the way up front, so now you know what's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our guests. So, introducing John Smith. Uh, John grew up in the mountains of Southwest Virginia, climbing trees and telling stories to whoever would listen. These days, he's a little too old to climb trees, but he still loves to tell stories. Once upon a time, he practiced law in Washington, D.C. before relocating to the rolling hills of Charlottesville, Virginia. He now lives in Southern California and spends as much time as he can exploring the outdoors and creating children's books with his wife, Shauna. The Climbing Tree is his first picture book. And introducing our awesome illustrator, Yulia Pilotskaya. Yulia was born in Odessa, Ukraine, but spent the later half of her childhood in upstate New York. She graduated in 2012 from the Fashion Institute of Technology with a double major in design and business. Like many artists, she finds nature and animals a cherished source of inspiration. She currently lives in Chicago, Illinois, and her, with her husband and two bunnies, Marnie and Ham. When she's not working, you can find her in a city park checking up on the never expanding, ever expanding wild bunny population of Chicago. Yay, welcome to both of our guests today. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, great. So I guess I will begin. Like uh, Megan said, my name is John Stith, and I am the author of The Climbing Tree, which is the book that we're going to be reading today. And I just want to start off by saying thank you so much uh, for coming. It really means a lot to me. It means a lot to Yulia. I know it's a Sunday morning in the summer, so there's a lot of different things to do, and you've chosen it to read a story, so I think that's great, and I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, like Megan said, I will read the story, and then we're gonna get to do an amazing art demonstration by Yulia, so she's the illustrator, and she made all these beautiful pictures and images in here. I'm really excited for that. She's gonna teach us how to draw one of these little guys right here. Uh, they're forest elves, and you'll notice as we read the story, they appear throughout on the little images, they sort of had a little magic. And I'm psyched for that because I've always wanted to learn how to draw one of these. And 
mine probably won't be very good. Hers will probably be very great. I'll be interested to see what yours are. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. And then like Megan said, at the end, we will do a Q&A. So if you have any questions uh, like, you know, how does she make such a cool picture or where do your ideas come from or anything like that. Or if you don't have any questions, totally cool too. But if you do, just drop them in the Q&A and we'll answer them at the end. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to tell you just a little bit of background about the story. So it's called The Climbing Tree and it's about two siblings, Big Brother, and he's right here, and Little Brother, and he's right here. And it's about how do these two different kids um, who have different ideas and want to play different things figure out how to share the same space. And it's definitely not always easy, but when that does actually happen, it's so much more fun. And that's definitely true in stories and it's true in real life as well. So it's about these two siblings, Big Brother and Little Brother, and it's also about their imagination. And I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes when I'm playing or pretending something, like it can feel so incredibly real to me. And there's this, that moment where you get in, get in so deep and then suddenly you've actually transformed into the thing that you're imagining. And if you pay close attention as we read and go along, you might actually see Big Brother and Little Brother transform into what they're imagining. So I think that's really cool. I can relate to that. And I think Yulia did an incredible job of showing how that can actually happen. So I think we're gonna have a lot of fun and we should begin. So I'm actually not gonna read from hard copy. I'm gonna read from a digital copy. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys so we can see a little bit better. So without further ado, the climbing. The Climbing Tree, written by John Stith, that's me, illustrated by Yulia Pilotskaya, that's her. Big Brother was first to scale the climbing tree. Little Brother, he called from the lowest branch, you should see what the world looks like from up here. Little Brother wanted to, but Mom said, Let's wait until you're bigger. Little brother gazed up into the climbing tree. I'm a bird, sang big brother, flapping his arms. Little brother had always loved digging in the dirt. But now, playing on the ground seemed less. When little brother was finally big enough, he went up the climbing tree. Big brother was right, thought little brother. The world looked completely different from up there. I'm a bird, he crowed, puffing out his chest. That's nice, said big brother, but you should see what it looks like from up here. I'm a mountain, declared big brother. I'm taller than the clouds. From way up here, you look like just a tiny bird. Little brother decided he didn't want to be a bird anymore. He reached out to climb higher, but slipped. Careful, said mom, guiding little brother back to its perch. No climbing above these branches until you're older. Okay? Little brother frowned. He had waited so long to be a bird, but already it seemed less. I can't wait until I'm older, thought little brother. Finally, he was. Big brother was right, thought little brother. Once again, the world looked completely different. I'm a mountain, he proclaimed. I'm taller than a cloud. Little brother waited expectantly for big brother to come outside. He'd never been part of a mountain range before. But when big brother came out, he climbed right past little brother. Where are you going? 
asked Little Brother. I'm done being a mountain, said Big Brother. Today, I'm the sun. Oh, said Little Brother. Then, me too. No, said Big Brother. Stop. But I'm a good climber, said Little Brother. I never slip anymore. Doesn't matter, said Big Brother. There isn't room for both of us. And anyway, there's only one sun in the sky. Everyone knows that. The next morning, Little Brother got up early to beat Big Brother out to the climbing tree. Today, he would be the sun. But when Little Brother went outside, his spot was already taken. What are you going to be today? Big Brother called down from the highest branch. Bird or mountain? Little Brother ran back inside and cried. Mom sat beside him on the bed. It's not fair, said Little Brother. I'm not a baby anymore. I'm big. Yes, said Mom, you are. But you will always be Big Brother's Little Brother. For days, Little Brother refused to go back out to the climbing tree. He wanted to show Big Brother what it felt like to be the sun when there were no mountains or birds for him to be above. But soon, Little Brother realized staying inside wasn't as fun. And being alone wasn't as fun either. Trying to hurt Big Brother didn't make Little Brother feel better. The next morning, Little Brother went back out to the climbing tree. There you are, exclaimed Big Brother. I missed you. Little Brother brightened. He called up in his biggest voice, what should I be today, a mountain or a bird? Neither, replied Big Brother. I think it would be more fun if you came up here with me. But I thought there wasn't enough room, said Little Brother. He didn't want to get hurt again. And anyway, everyone knows there's only one sun in the sky. That's true, agreed Big Brother. He smiled. But everyone also knows there's a moon in the sky. And there is room up here for a moon. Little Brother's heart flipped. Big Brother scooted over and patted the top branch. You should see what the world looks like from up here. Big Brother was right. And Little Brother had never felt more. The end. So that's uh, the end of the story. And I'm actually going to turn it over now to Yulia for an art demonstration. I hope you all enjoyed the story. Um, so I'll just wait for Yulia to pop back on. Here. But uh, yeah, so that's up. Oh, there she is. Hey, Yulia. Hi. All right. So now she's going to take it away with an art demonstration, and then I'll come back on at the end. All right, everyone. I'm going to start um, sharing my screen here in a second, and hopefully, you'll be able to see. Uh, me do a little drawing demonstration of this little elf guy. <laughs> um, so you're just going to need a basic graphite pencil to do the sketch and then whatever medium you want to color the elf in. I 
recommend using colored pencils, but if you have paint or whatever you have readily available should work. Um, so step number one is we're just going to draw a kind of rounded triangle, <laughs> if you will, um, just like I have here on the left. Um, and you can use your, just your graphite pencil for that. So you can just kind of sketch the sides of the triangle and then um, round out the top, just like I'm doing here. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, actually, elves are known to be quite wobbly and imperfect creatures. So if you have a little wobble in your elf, that's totally fine. <laughs> So something like that. Um, yours can look different, but this is the basic elf body shape, if you will. <laughs> um, all right, so hopefully you've got that going on. Um, for the second step, we're gonna add some arms and legs to our elf. So basically the legs will just kind of be an extension of this bottom rounded curve. Um, and elves have kind of rounded, short, stubby little legs. <laughs> um, so yeah, just add some legs to the bottom of your elf. And then the arms are kind of halfway up the body. So on the side here, you can, and just short little kind of ovalish arms for your elf. And they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Um, yeah, like I said, elves are very unique from one another. So everyone's elf will look a little different. All right, let's move on to step number three. Um, and this is a pretty easy one. We're just gonna add the face. Um, and so if you start kind of by the top of the arm here, um, you can just draw like a, kind of like an oval shape for, the, for where the face will be. And the elf is starting to take shape. <laughs> All right, so let's keep going. Step number four, let's add some eyes to the sides here and then a mouth. And on the left here, I have a happy elf, but you can also have like a grumpy elf or kind of an indifferent elf or you can have a happy elf. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, once you have the face added, we're just going to add his little flowers. So our elves um, grow some flowers out of the top of their heads because they're always helping the forest with its tasks. So you can just draw your favorite flower or copy the flowers I have here. Um, and don't worry about being perfect. Like I just kind of messed it up, but this is just our sketch and we'll erase some of these lines later. So yeah, I'm just going to add three flowers. <laughs> Um, and then in the next step, we're going to design a little outfit for our elf and any other accessories that you want your elf to have. So um, maybe he has like a sweater or a jumper. Um, I have some glasses on the one on the left. It's really up to you um, how you want to dress your elf. <laughs> 
So I'm just gonna give my guy a sweater and I like a little ruffle sleeve and bottom here. And maybe there's like a little ruffle at the top too. Um, maybe my guy will have some heart-shaped glasses. And maybe he'll have a star pin or a couple of stars on his sweater. Just cause it's fun. So yeah, decorate it however you want. Um, you can give him shoes or even like a little hat. The sky's the limit. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna move on to kind of adding some color and perfecting or bringing our elf to life. So I recommend just using an eraser to lightly erase some of your guidelines here, just, just enough so you can still see them, um, but so that whatever you're painting over will cover over these lines, just so you don't see them when the drawing is finished. So I'm just kind of going through and erasing some of these lines. And you don't have to. If you're painting, you'll probably be able to cover these um, with the paint without having to erase. Totally up to you. So OK, I can kind of see my design here but my pencils will cover, cover it. All right, so let's start um, adding some color to our elf. So I would like to probably do his sweater first um, and leave kind of the body, the red for last. Um, so I'm gonna give him a blue sweater and I'm just gonna color it in with my colored pencils. And um, when I'm drawing, I like to leave a little bit of the texture, I guess, of the pencil. So I leave, I don't color it in like totally perfectly. Um, but it's up to you to do what feels right or what looks good. Um, there's no right answer for how you color this in really. It's a personal preference and your elves will all look great no matter what. So I'm just leaving kind of like where my stars are just so I know, but kind of coloring, like coloring them over them a bit, which is fine. All right, um, let's see, for his sunglasses, Maybe we'll do, we'll copy this other elf and make them, no, let's make them like a bright pink because <laughs> they're hearts. So if you gave your guy some glasses, you can color those in. All right, um, let's see, let's add the stars. I'll make those yellow. Those will go on top of his sweater. And maybe we want to add some little embellishment to his sweater. Um, just play around with it. This is the fun part. Just kind of decorating this little guy. Giving him his outfit for the day. 
um, for the for the plants, for the little flowers growing out of the top of his head. Um, I'm gonna do some green stems, but it doesn't have to be green. And maybe you will add some leaves to the flowers too. And then for the actual flower color, um, I'm gonna go with yellow again. <laughs> so this is kind of why we erased some of those lines so that the final drawing looks better. And then when you're done, if you're using colored pencils or paint, you can erase even more um, and clean it up even more. So I'm just gonna next darken his eyes because I erased those a little bit. And his little smile. <laughs> okay, that was a little dark, maybe a little lighter. And uh, maybe I'll give him some pink cheeks, some rosy pink cheeks because Elves are known to have pink cheeks. And I'll try to zoom in. It's kind of hard to see maybe because he's wearing glasses, but he's got some pink cheeks now. All right, and then the last step would be just to coloring the body. And um, I'm making him red, but again, the color choice is yours. And you can kind of just go around um, what you've already colored so that um, so that you have you have your design elements visible and this will probably take you a little bit my glasses kind of started blending in so I might go over them with another color and make them like a technicolor sunglasses type thing. <laughs> um, let's see. So hopefully your elf is coming along. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to add them to the Q&A window and we'll try to answer them. I'll try to answer any elf related questions. <laughs> um, and then this, uh, a guide, the guide that I'm following now um, to draw these guys will be available for you um, in the YouTube video. And the YouTube video will also be available to rewatch if you want to draw more elves or change your elf, give your elf friends, make a whole elf village. Um, you'll be able to do that after this. All right, so I kind of have his body colored in. He's looking real cute. And I'm gonna maybe change the eyeglasses. I'm just gonna add like a pop of color so that they stand out a bit more. All right, so we have a simple little elf guy. Um, and like I said, you can go back and kind of erase even more of those lines that we had initially drawn with our pencil. Um, and then I like to add a little, <laughs> um, I don't know, extra little spice to the drawing by maybe giving him some stars that surround him um, or just little fun elements so that you're drawing looks more balanced. So maybe there's like a little wave. Maybe this star is actually like a little creature with eyes. That's his friend. Um, or her friend. And 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys have an elf <laughs> that you like. Uh, you can continue working on him after this and adding some more fun decorations like, I don't know, little shoes or little gloves or continue decorating his sweater. Um, yeah, and let us know if you have any questions. Um, and I will turn this back over um, to Megan. <laughs> thank you for following along and thank you John for doing that reading it was great oh, it, I loved learning how to draw the, the horse elf mine sort of ended up I think looking like a doctor sort of I don't know what happened <laughs> sort of, my first one was like an egg so I had to I had to restart but that was really fun <laughs> I've got a little I just had a pen so oh wow nice little elves. In the chat, um, but I'll say it here too, we would love to see the forest elves that you drew along during the event, or if you draw them along following off the YouTube video or um, the link to the steps. Um, you can send an email to me, I put it in the chat, but it's just my name, Megan, at powerhousearena.com, and I will make sure to pass those along to John and Yulia so they can see your little forest elves too. Um, let's see if we've got anybody have any questions for our guests. I'm a little bit curious personally um, to know since you guys do live in two different places. Um, I mean, I guess did you sort of two questions? Did you know each other before? Um, you kind of did the, the climbing tree together. And what was it like kind of working while you're not in the same place? Uh, we did not know each other. Um, we got really lucky to get paired together uh, with Jordan, who is our editor. And that was amazing. And interestingly, uh, we didn't really work at all, like collaborate. Like she had the story from me and then she took that story and created this totally amazing immersive world. And like, I would get to see some of like her proofs and things that she had been making along the way, but because I know nothing about art and really wouldn't be super helpful, it was just sort of like keep them apart. So only afterward did we actually begin to speak. Cool. Yeah. Um, Jordan did provide me with a lot of feedback um, she was kind of the in intermediary, um, so she would talk to John and be like, hey, he had this thought, and I'd be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she kind of guided us through the process. <laughs> we do have one question in the chat that is uh, from Ginny and Rob Clark, and they asked, does John have a brother? I do have a brother. Uh, yeah, I have an older brother, so... Um, and so growing up, I was the younger brother. I obviously still am the younger brother. So there was a lot of wanting to be up sort of on his same level because I thought that whatever he was doing was just the coolest thing. And I was just like, oh, if he's riding a bike, I want to ride a bike. If he's climbing a tree, I want to climb a tree. And like, I think probably a lot of other older siblings who are listening and certainly for my brother was like, that's not exactly what I want. I want my own space right now. So it's sort of like, how do we navigate this? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, Yulia, you're a, a younger sibling as well, right? Yeah, I'm a younger sibling as well. So when I read the story, I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> how it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm an older sibling personally, so, and there's only two of us. So, I mean, I still really in that, you know, we always, there were, in having to navigate that, like, you know, spending time with your sibling, but also being older, so you don't want to always do what your younger sibling wants to do. Because yeah. um, I'm, I'm two years older, so um, depending on what age we were at, sometimes that was just enough where it was like, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm way older than you. I'm so much cooler than you right now. Yeah. I'm so old. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so 
dude, I'm eight years old, so this is not happening. <laughs> I feel like if you're younger, your age difference just seems so huge, even if it's like two years. But then as you grow older, you're like, we're basically the same age. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um we have someone says uh in the chat arthur is here and says hi to john hello arthur <laughs> <laughs> uh i hope uh I, I, arthur is very very young so i but i know he's a big fan of reading so that's really cool um and i saw brooke and and kira and bobby were also saying hello so hello to everyone um who who i know so this is really fun yeah um i if anybody has any kind of other questions for john or for you leah for both of them um oh we got another one uh -huh. um jill bailey asks how long did it take you leah to get an idea of how you wanted to illustrate the story did you have to read it a few times or did it come to you more quickly oh um yeah i definitely had to read it a few times and it changed and evolved over the course of um i think we had like half a year to work on it so yeah it went through many many drafts and um jordan and john would have feedback for me in terms of like the characters or kind of um the narrative and how i was illustrating that narrative like with the dynamic between the two brothers um so yeah it took you know half a year <laughs> and a lot of <laughs> versions um but you know at the end of the day i think that that process actually like really pushed the book forward and um that was part of like how i developed some of the more magical elements of the books were like with the elves and the little creatures was through that like reading and rereading and thinking about this world constantly and new things popping into my head. And luckily, uh, Jordan and John were very lenient with like saying, yeah, add that. <laughs> yeah, I remember getting, uh, getting a, an, an early picture of the, this, this page where like one of the elves is in a rocket ship and everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so cool. And like the little planets and a comet. And so that was just, you know, she just turned her imagination loose and it was, I, I felt like it was really special. So it was, it was a lot of fun to see. Yeah, we've got another question here. Um, Sarah Kate wants to know if you went to school to become an artist for books. Uh, oh. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> um, me neither. No, I didn't. I went to school for interior design and um, international trade, which <laughs> is, I never used either one of those degrees. Um, I was like artsy in high school and stuff, but I was very determined to maybe actually not be an artist because I thought that artists just had to do like fine art. <laughs> that was my idea going into college and I didn't really know how expansive your career could actually be as an artist. So no, I didn't go to school. I'm self-taught and uh, especially digitally self-taught. I started with like one of those very first iPads and doodling on the Procreate app and uh, it took me like a really long time to get even somewhat like, okay, this is looking like art. <laughs> do you, I, I'll, I'll ask a question. Do you do things painting ever like in, in like off? Do you do things that aren't digital? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, especially before Procreate was like a thing. I really just started because uh, I got an iPad and it was just like fun to, to draw on it. And I didn't really think that it would be like my serious platform for drawing, but it just kind of evolved that way. And I'm glad that it did because <laughs> uh, kind of like in today's illustration, you kind of have to have at least some element of it be digital because of 
changes and for printing purposes and color corrections and all that it's just a lot easier um, and sometimes not even possible to change uh, more traditional art but I do have a sketchbook and I do paint with gouache and that's kind of and watercolor and that's kind of what I tried to replicate in my digital work is like how I work traditionally um, and I think it's good to have that like traditional a uh, foundation because if you just start with digital I feel like it looks very very digital <laughs> whereas if you approach it with like oh this is how I would paint it on paper it kind of maybe has more of a combined look of traditional and digital <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool I think um kind of I guess, John, your version of that question, did you go to school for anything related to writing books? Uh, definitely not. And I never even really thought that I would write a book or any anything like that. It just sort of ended up happening over time, sort of organically and uh, right, 100% self-taught. I used to do a lot more technical writing. I still do writing like that um a little bit more serious but this is just such a fun way to express yourself and in writing stories you will get these ideas or it seems like if i try to sit and write i can never actually get myself to write i have to have the idea beforehand so i'll, I'll text myself if i have an idea or next to my bed i have a little pad that i can write ideas down like if i get an idea like when I wake up in the morning or in the middle of the night or whatever, just because I find like it sort of gets like, it's like a lightning bolt a story can hit you or an idea and like, it's hard to force, but you just have to open yourself to the idea of like, oh, I'd like to tell a story or just, I guess I've always been somewhat like imaginative or seeing the world in a different way. And it was just sort of, you just sort of got to give yourself permission to say, oh, I'm going to start writing about this and see where it goes. And it's been really, really fun. Awesome. All right. Let's see, does anybody have, we can do like one last question if we've got one. If not, that's cool too. Um, I'm going to put the link for the climbing tree in the chat one more time just in case you missed it before or it got kind of buried. You don't have to scroll up to the top. Um, and like I said earlier, that's just a really great way to support us and also are really great guests um, because you gotta buy artists work. That's a good way to support them. All right, it looks like that's all the questions that we've got. So um, the link's in the chat. Um, thank you so, so much to John and to Yulia for coming and uh, doing story time and drawing demonstration with us. And thank you for everybody else for joining and taking part of your Sunday morning to kind of come hang out with us. We really appreciate it. Definitely. And um, yeah. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.